Yeah, testing. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to begin our study here. And um, so we're going to be looking at Elon, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdin, which Stephen in the previous study has laid out for us. Um, and um, there's it's very, very little information, but we're going to need God's Holy Spirit to interpret these things. So let's invite God's presence. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for this time of study. Um, We are thankful for your word and the chronology of the Bible that guides us and helps us to sort through these stories. We know, Lord, as we lay these things on a line, that we are following uh, the counsel in Isaiah 28 to set in order upon a line from here to here of the events of Scripture. And we pray, Lord, that as we do this, you can give us wisdom and insight into the present condition of this movement and the decisions that we need to make in our personal lives uh, regarding these truths. So we invite your spirit to instruct us, to help us in our day-to-day battle with self, and to help us reflect your character, that that people may be drawn to you. We pray for those around the world studying these things. We know, Lord, we are a small group, but we know that you are powerful and that we can trust in you. So be, be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the board here in a minute, but one of the things we need to remember, when we have started with this study, we started with the premise, and that premise came when we were studying Judges chapter 2, and when we looked at Judges chapter 2, verse 1, from the Lord coming from Gilgal, the angel of the Lord coming from Gilgal to Bochum, that we saw there in 2 verse 1, we saw 2001. And then we looked at the verses in Judges chapter 2, and we could see the history of this movement being described from 2001 to 2023. And here we are in 2023. So we know that this is information that's given to us to help us presently. We also came to understand that in our study of the lines that we have a line that goes from Eden lost to Eden restored that has seven way marks and that we can zoom into those way marks and discover another line and zoom into each of the way marks on that line and have other lines again. And when we look at our history We know that we're zooming in to the Sunday law on Ellen White's line. That's Israel at the end of the world. And that our line that we have that Jeff has laid out is the repeat of Millerite history. And we're zooming into 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel's message. And then we know that, um, that that's the line of the judges is zooming into this 9-11 as the second angel arriving. And then we have the judges line. So the judges judges line is laid out from 9-11 to 2023. It does have this other date, April 5th, 2030, as the fourth angel arriving, which we're going to address uh, tomorrow, mostly. And then we also have um, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. So this is a line within the line of the judges, and it is a line that is the second angel empowered. Now, which line is, which way mark is that in Millerite history? So if we take Millerite history, and we'll just put the second angel arriving here, we're going to have the second angel formalized and the second angel empowered. And then we're going to have the third angel arrive. So in Millerite history, the second angel empowered is which way mark? What would we call that? 
It's the midnight cry. In Millerite history, this is August 15th, right? Okay. Now, the way mark that we're looking at right now, if this is the line of the judges, you know, we had Jephthah over here. Let me see, where was Jephthah? Uh, yeah, so Jephthah over here as the second angel being formalized, right? And then we have Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon as the second angel empowered. And we find this story where we find it in the verses of, uh, this is in chapter 12, verses 8 to 15, right? So this is 8 to 15. Okay, so it's the message of the midnight cry. Simple enough. Now, in our history, when we look at the line of the judges and we think about uh, eight, we think about this way mark, we mark it as December 25th, 2021. That's the second angel empowered. So that is the message of the midnight cry. And then the third angel arrives January 11th, 2023. And that's going to be the story of Samson. So, so when we look into these lines and we zoom in, we see we get more detail um, and these lines overlap. Now, um, I do want to look at the chronology here that we have. So with Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, we have these uh, 8 to 15, so that's going to be 8 verses, right, including verse 8. And we're going to be covering this period of time here. And the interesting thing about them is there is no oppressor in between them. Uh, they follow after Jephthah, so there is not a period of somebody oppressing them. Um, so you've got Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon. And we have... 7, 10, and 8, right? So this re represents July 18, right? In, in the Bible, if they want to represent 18, you go 10 and 8. So, so this is a symbol of July 18th, these three judges. So they have a symbol there for us. <clears throat> now, there isn't a lot of narrative. There's not a great deal of description. It's like... Uh, you know, if you're going to read a good book and you pick up what they used to have was telephone books, there's a lot of characters there, but not much character development and very little plot, right? So we kind of have something similar here. We have uh, just tells us a little bit about them, but it doesn't say, you know, there's no story here, right? So we don't have a narrative. <clears throat> But we can still construct a line, and, and there we use a lot of these symbols that are in these verses. Now, when we looked at Jephthah, there was all kinds of symbols. We couldn't even address them all. Um, but here, we, have to, we really have to pay attention to the details in these passages. So it says, and after him, of course, that would be Jephthah, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he sent abroad and took in 30 daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibsen and was buried in, at Bethlehem. And after him, Elon, a Zebulonite, judged Israel. And he judged Israel 10 years. And Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried in Ajalon in the country of Zebulun. And after him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, a Pirithonite, judged Israel. And he had 40 sons and 30 nephews that rode on three score and ten ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirithonite, died and was buried in Pirithon in the land of Ephraim in the Mount of the Amalekites. Right. 
So very little to go on here. Now, of course, we have there the 7, the 10, and the 8, which gives us this symbol of July 18th. So it tells us that, that we are looking at something that relates to this message. <clears throat> but we have no oppressor mentioned. So they're not delivering anyone. These would be those exceptions. Now, they are judging then during this 40, year of, 40 years of Philistine oppression connected with Samson in Judges 13, verse 1. So when we look at Judges 13, verse 1, which is the next verse, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years, this would be going back before Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. And it's going to go back and cover this earlier time um, where... Samson then is going to be born, but Samson is going to be raised up in this time of these judges. And that we're going to look at uh, this evening. <clears throat> now, we know this is a zoom into December 25th, 2021. And um, when we look at... Uh, the first message, so we're going to draw this out on a line, so I have to erase this, and we're going to draw it out. We're going to look at why we do it this way. We're going to have to start somewhere. So when we construct the line, we have a period of darkness. Right? And so we're going to have a darkness here. <clears throat> and, and we have constructed this line. We, we used lots of different um, symbols. And we spent a lot of time deciding how to draw this line. And so we're going to draw it and then kind of show the rationale. But we're going to deal with this first message, Ibzon. So that is, each of these judges, so you got the first angel arrives here, the second angel arrives here, and the third angel arrives here, and each of these judges is going to represent a different message, and this is a logical way to do it. So you got Ibzan here, um, I'm going to put him up here, Ibzan, and then we're going to have Elon and Abdon. Okay. <clears throat> so each one's a different message. And we have uh, symbols that we attach to them. So when we looked at Ibzan, we saw that he has a, a gematria, the sum of which is 52. Elon, his gematria, if I remember... Correctly. Yeah, it was 46, and then he's 36. So, so we just looked at the gematria there uh, with each of their names. So, so we construct this line in this way. It, it makes sense. We, we have to start somewhere. Now, we don't know what the darkness is. We're going to have to figure that out right as we go through this. Now, what we have decided in looking at this line, since it relates to July 18th, 2020, in some of the symbols, and, play, and where we're placing it as zooming into December 25th, 2021, we're going to say, well, December 5th, 25th, 2021 is going to be a this way mark here in the center. So we're going to, I'm doing the dates under, I'm always inconsistent, but December 25th, 2021. And we, we had decided that the best place to start this line is at December 6th, 2020. Oops. I don't know what I'm doing. December 6th, 2020. And then we're going to... Um, 
try to decide what this, this line is about. We have to have some kind of period of darkness. We know that if we have a first ma message arrive on December 6th, that this would relate, relate to the rejection of the symbolic use of numbers. So, because that's what happens on December 6th, 2020. And so we're going to need a, a way mark here and a way mark here. <clears throat> That's going to be the first angel formalized and the first angel empowered. <clears throat> now, if this is the midnight cry way mark, that is, if it's the second angel empowered, in the line of the judges, what is the second angel's message referring to? So we have the line of the judges. And it's going to start at 9-11, and it's going to deal with this darkness that has to do with time, right? There's lots of things related to it, but it's going to be formalized October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019. And then that's going to be the story of Deborah and Barak. And then you're going to have Gideon at 11-9. And then you're going to have Tola and Jair at July 18th. So the second angel arriving is July 18th in the line of the judges. But this, this message, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, is the empowerment of that message. So if we're going to look at the empowerment and we place it at December 25th, 2021, how does this empowerment relate to how we're going to draw out this line? So if this is the midnight cry message. We look at Millerite history. We know that Samuel Snow has a message in Millerite history regarding October 22, 1844, right? So, so we know that our message is about something in the future. In this case, we're saying it's about 2023. It's about something in this movement. So this would still have to be about that empowerment of July 18th, and so these messages must address that. And, and the only way that this can address it, it doesn't have a narrative, it just has symbols. And these symbols must be empowering this message of July 18th. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to put here that we're going to have the seven years, so I should put that in, the 10 years, and the eight years, and the date that we put here for the third angel arriving for Abdon is we're going to put December 25th, 2022. So that's going to be one year to the day after this date. Now, we know that this date here is what day on the biblical calendar? December 25th, 2020. Okay, so the 20th day of the ninth month. Now, um, December 6th, 2020, what day is it on the biblical calendar? It's the 20th day of the ninth month as well. So, so when they decided to publish the declaration... They put it one year to the day before the end of our line. Do you think they were aware that they, they released the declaration on this date? It has the symbol of the 126, and it has the symbol of the 20th day of the ninth month, right? So one of the things we can see here is that this is a year. But this is a biblical year, right? It's not, it's not a year on our calendar. Now, this date here is a year, but it's a date on our calendar, right? So we could see that as we, we started to look at these dates, we weren't thinking about, okay, 
This is the 20th day of the ninth month. This is the 20th day of the ninth month. We're going to place them like this. We started placing the dates. These are way marks, obviously, very, very obvious way marks in our history. They aren't contrived way marks. They're not some minor event. This is a major event in our history relating to the rejection of July 18, 2020. This here is a major line in our way marks, the way, way mark in our lines. And then this one, this is this anniversary, but it's here that we're going to start. Uh, we start the day before we make an invitation to the Canadian group to, to come to some studies regarding the lines simply presented. And, and so we're marking that as the third angel arriving. But that's going to be one year. So you're going to have here, you know, 365 days. And then here, I think it's three, 384, if I, if I remember correctly, 384 days. So that's called um, an embolismic regular year. If it was 383, that would be a deficient. If it was 385, that would be a complete. But they're an embolism because it has... Instead of 354 days, which is a normal, regular Jewish uh, year of 12 lunar months, this year has 13 lunar months, right? So you have 384 days. So there's something about that line there that's just, uh, you know, remarkable. Now, altogether, um, this is 700 and 59 days, I think, right? 759, so, or 749, that's right, 749 days. I should just look at my notes instead of trying to do math. Now, 749 is 110, that's not 110, that's 107 times seven, right? So if you take the tenth day of the seventh month as a symbol has 107, and you multiply it by seven, you're going to get this number of days. So we can see the symbol there of the Day of Atonement. Right? And the midnight cry, of course, is pointing to the Day of Atonement, the tenth day of the seventh month. Now I'm trying to go through this line a little more slowly. One is because I've gone through some of these lines very quickly. But this line here, there isn't a lot here, but I want to see you. I want you to see how it's constructed, how we analyze it as we go through it. Now, when we look at this first message arriving, there is a bunch, a bunch of things that happens here. This is a weekend, December 4th, 5th, and 6th. And this date, the 20th day of the ninth month, relates to the story of Ezra. And it also relates to the story of Nehemiah in the sense that Ezra and Nehemiah both have uh, a period of three days that we mark. And so that three days where they call them to come to repent, that's the 20th day of the ninth month. We know that, that we attached here to this date um, as being the three years that precedes this. But we also know that... Um, this relates to, this 20th day of the ninth month relates to the April 5th, 2030 date. Um, it's a witness of that. And I wrote a paper, and that paper was published February 24th, 2021. That's going to be 80 days after the December 6th, 2020 declaration. And then in this movement... Um, something's going to happen, and that's going to happen 220 days after, and that's going to be October 2nd, 2021, right? And that event marks this as a period of 300 days between those two events. Now, this is the conflict with the American group. This is where I'm uh, banned from speaking in the American group. I mean, they say I can make comments, but I'm not going to teach. and They really don't want to hear from me. So that's what's going to happen on October 2nd, 2021. Now, this is going to be 
84 days to December 5th, 2021. It's going to be 7 times 12 days. Okay. So if you added them all together, you would see the 384 days, right? <clears throat> Now, the second message follows these 84 days, right? And its formalization is the presentation of Odilio's message and is empowered on, Thanksgiving, on the Thanksgiving anniversary. So the, the third message is 31 days later. So we're, we're going to see how this works. So I didn't really, in my notes, describe this, but this is Colin's presentation, Right? Now, we have here Collins, we have Stevens, Stevens' presentation. So Collins is going to be about Trump. Stevens is going to be the 777 years. And, and then I have my message, and this is just... What I'm addressing here is um, Ezra, 7 to 10, right? That's what I'm addressing. I'm looking at history of Ezra, uh, which I'd already studied into, but I'm saying here we have the 20th day of the ninth month. This comes from Ezra. We need to focus upon what this is about and... Um, we have this conflict that happens when Colin presents his message. Um, so, so that is what happens here. So we're saying that this is simply formalized when Odilio presents. Right? That's going to be 49 days later, 7 times 7. So we got February 12th, 2022. And that's, that is, Adili introduces the 1629 number. Which we could have addressed. Now, what are the things in the 1629 that Adili had brought out? Uh, there was if you added 9-11 um, to it. Was that what it was? Or was it 391? You take away 9-11 and you get... Right. You get July 18. And then also they had something to do with uh, 2020. I can't remember where you add something. Add 391. Add 391. And you get 2020. Should be. Okay. So you can see you get that July 18, 2020 with that number by taking two of our main symbols. 9-11 and 391. Yeah, and then if you add 360, it gives you to 11-9-1989, right? So that number just becomes a, a secondary number that relates to other numbers, right? So it, it relates to these other numbers and these dates. So, so this becomes a formalization. Now, it is empowered... When we look at Thanksgiving in 2022. So the American Thanksgiving is November 24th, 2022. And we, we have the 1691 attached to that. That is, um, we don't show it in this line that I have drawn here. Uh, but I have it on the next page. So this goes to when time setting came into the movement. So we have a date way back here, June 9th, 2018, and that date here is going to be 1,629 days. Boy, it's going to draw down. 1629 days
There we go. 1629 days from when time setting comes into the movement and we get to this Thanksgiving day, right? Now, there is other things that it addresses as well. That is, if we go back to July 18th, which, you know, is way over here on this line. But if you go back to July 18th from November 24th, 2022, it's 859 days. Now, 859 and, um, is base 8. In base 8, it's 1533, right? So if you look up on number empire and you type in 859, you're going to see under base 8, it'll say it's 1533. So it also relates to July 18th. So it had this structure. And it also goes back 11,900 days, which comes from the Islamic calendar, to April 26, 1990, which is a symbolic date of the 26th day of the fourth month. And that date is 168 days after November 9th, 1989. So, so those lines, those, those symbols, the 168, does anybody know what 168 is? Yeah, so 168 is the number of hours in one week. And so we go from 11, 9, 89, and we count 168 days, and it'll bring us to April 26th, uh, 1990, right? So that April 26th in 1990 is a symbol, and the 168 is a symbol, and it connects to this date by 11,900 days, which is 33 Islamic years and seven months, or 32 of our years and seven months. Okay? <clears throat> okay. I have a question. Yep. Does that 168 then relate to the 168 on the 1850 chart? Yes. So we know that the number 168 is um, on the 1850 chart is uh, the first division of Greece. Is, no, Rome conquered the first division of Greece, 168. So, I mean, it's a symbol that's on the charts. Right. So it would relate to it. Uh, but we primarily look at it as a symbol of the week. And, um, you know, if we go, obviously, if we go from November 9th, 1989, and we count 11,900 days, we'll come to June 9th, 2022, and 168 days to November uh, 24th, 2022. So I can do it either way. Um, but the other point about this is we have a number uh, that is that was discovered on that date. So on November 24th, 2022, I had noticed that this was, uh, to this date, April 5th, 2030, that this, between these two dates, so I'll do it like this, is 2,688 days, okay? And that number is 16 times 168. And, and 16 is an important number because it's 8 plus 8, and 8 is a symbol, and 8 plus 8 is a symbol. It comes from Second Chronicles 29. And um, we already have the 168 in the line, so this 2,688 to April 5th, 2030, I thought was notable, but then Iran looked up the number 688 on Google, and the first thing that he noticed was an IRS form. So that's the Internal Revenue Service in the United States. That's their tax department. And it is a form entitled Form 2688, Application for an Additional Extension of Time 
to fi file U.S. individual income tax return. So we saw there something. We have an additional extension of time, and there's an application to file, you know, to, to have an additional extension of time. Of course, this is for filing your individual income tax return. But can we say that this is a symbol for what's happening in this movement, that God has given us an additional extension of time? Is that the case? Right? Because we expected things to be much sooner. We now have this additional extension of time. And we can say that that April 5th, 2030 date symbolizes this. It symbolizes a date in the future. Right? <clears throat> so so that, that helps us understand this line a little bit. Now we know that this... Um, this date, April 5th, 2030, we put on our line as the fourth angel arrives. But again, we're not marking this date as an event that's going to happen in our movement or anything. It's just a symbolic date because we're not predicting time. But we know God has given us more time because we need to come to the upper room. We need to be united. There's a work that needs to be done. Now, um, we also have some other things on this line. So if we look at um, this period of time that is, well, that's going from December 6th to November 24th, we should also note that that's 718 days, right? So if we go from December 6th, 2020, to November 24th, 2022, that's going to be back here to, uh, pardon me, December 6th. That's going to be 718 days, right? So again, that symbol of July 18th. So we can see how this is an empowerment of everything that we have done. It gives us all of these symbols. It doesn't have to have an event to be an empowerment. It just needs to give us these symbols. Okay. <clears throat> and this is going to be uh, 31 days before December 25th. Right? 31 days is a symbol. The week of Christ. Right? <clears throat> so just to kind of go over some of these symbols here, we have uh, the 300 days, which is broken to 80 and 220. Uh, we have the 84 days, which is on the 1853 chart. But we have some other things. We have this gematria for Ibsen, uh, Elon, and Abdon. And we can do things with these. For instance, if we take the first and the last, uh, Ibsen and Abdon, and we multiply together 52 by 36, right? So you got, this is 52, this is 36. So 52 times 36 equals 1872, right? So the first and the last give us this date or this symbol for the date, July 18, 2020. <clears throat> um, and then we have... Uh, the gematria for the last two, the 46 times 36. So we're going to take uh, Elon, which is 46, times Abdon, and we get this number, 1656. So what's the significance of 1656? It's, it's the number of years from the creation of the world to the flood. Right, so, and it has it has other symbols attached to it, uh, so it's it's dealing or addressing prophecy. That is, it's addressing the 120 years, right? So it's addressing the first time prophecy, and you can see how uh, this would then be connected to uh, this message. So it it relates back to the flood, but it's telling things about this message. 
Now, the product of Ibsen is, so Ibsen, his name is uh, 6552. So we'll just go here. So we take his name, it's H6552. I think I'm correct on that. And uh, this, this number, this Hebrew number, uh, it can be, uh, have the factors of 52 and 126. Right? 52 times 126. Okay? So it's an interesting number in, in that sense. Um, now, if we take, um, and we're going to look at Elon. Now, with Elon, we can look at his gematria. And we can look at the product. That is, instead of just taking the letters of his name as a number and adding them together, we're going to multiply them together. We get 12,600. 12, now, 12,600, we can see the 126, the 1260. But we know it's also the number of days or the, the number of hours in 525 days. Right? So with Elon... We're going to take the product. The product is 12,600, but 12,600 hours equals 525 days, right? And December 25th, this way mark, is at the end of 525 days, right? So, so it makes sense that Elon is going to have this symbol as the product of his gematria. Now, um, the 30 sons, 30 daughters, and 30 stepdaughters of Abdon, uh, they give us this 30, 30, 30, which we have looked at uh, in other places, and we're going to look at in Samson again. It's going to happen. But that's going to give us 25252.5. So 303,030 divided by 12 gives us this number. And so that becomes a symbol of the whole 777 structure. And that's going to be in um, Abdon's uh, children, right? Because Abdon is the one with all of those uh, uh, 40 sons and 30 nephews. Or is that what we're looking at? Am I looking at? No, that's Ibzan, pardon me. So Ibzan is that one. I'm getting that mixed up. So Ibzan has the 30, 30, 30. And it's going to be Abdon that has the 70 and the 30, which makes 40. Right? And he's going to have the 470 cults. So we'll look at that. Um, so Abdon's product, if we look at Abdon, his product is 1680, right? So, so if you take the 1680, we already saw this, right? The 168. So that's just how many days would that be if you had 1,680 hours? Well, if seven days is 168 hours, 1,680 is 70 days, right? And 70 is associated with Abdon, right? right. Because he's going to have the 40 sons and the 30 nephews, and they're going to have their 70 colts. Now, we can also uh, take the Hebrew numbers for Ibzan and Elon, right? So if we take Ibzan, his Hebrew number is 78. Okay? Or is that the other way around? Um, Ibzan 78, and Elon is 356. And if we add those numbers together, we get the number... 434. And we know this number, we've seen this, this is 62 times 7, right? The set, the 62 weeks. So the 62 weeks is uh, the iterative mirrored division of 777 with the complement of 343 three, or 7 times 7 times 7. So these are extremely powerful symbols. 
Now, what do we do about this, though? Like, if we're taking this line, we don't, we don't have a story. We have just been able to use these symbols, and we can show that the symbols in the story of Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon fit the structure we construct that we made of this zoom into uh, the empowerment of the message, which is December 25th, 2021. So can we say that we have done this correctly based upon this information, this analysis, right? So what we did first is we drew the line first. That is, we didn't do the analysis and then draw the line. That is, we didn't create the line completely from all the symbols. We used some of them. And then from those symbols, we analyzed the line and found that it bore witness to the validity of the line. So it appears to me that we, we, we have to accept this line. But now the question is, what does it mean? What is it telling us? Well, we know that this is about a rejection of July 18th in this movement, right? right? And if we go back to Jephthah, remember the Shibboleth, the Ephraimites, were they invited? But they said they weren't, right? Correct. And so they go to war against Jephthah, right? And then Jephthah is going to take the fords, and when the people are trying to cross the fords, they're going to ask them to say shibboleth, but they can't, they say sibboleth. And we know that those who are rejecting the messages can't advance, right? Correct. That, that would be the indication that people need to study these messages. We need to take them seriously. Now, we don't know what the future holds. We're not sh we can't say anything about other people. We don't know what their destiny, destiny is. We don't know how this particularly applies uh, to this movement. Um, but this is the situation that we are in. We're in this situation where, as a movement, light has been coming to us on these lines. An invitation was made. But Ephraim didn't come, right? And we've made invitations along the way. In the story of the judges and Joshua, are there many invitations to the Ephraimites? Yes. And every time, what do they say? You didn't call us. Right. And every time, were they called? Yes. Yeah. And as it advances... It gets worse each time, right? To the point that they actually come to war. Correct? Correct. So what does this mean to this movement? If, if we're going to take this seriously, what we have done with these lines so far, we can see that invitations are being made and invitations are being rejected. And yet, something's going to happen we don't know what, and the Ephraimites are going to say, you called us, right? This is, of course, a message. We're not talking about individual people. We don't know anything about individuals. We're just saying what this story tells us. But we were called. We weren't called when they were. And are they going to be able to pr frame the word correctly? They won't. They're going to be left behind. And this is a serious matter. This is not some game. Now, I do need to just, on, on, on my notes on Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon, there's a typo. In the paragraph in the middle, where it talks about December 25th in 2022, aligns with, it says the 10th day of the first month. It should be the first day of the 10th month. So it's just a little bit of uh, something there. But we have these symbols. Now, not everybody's a mathematician. Not everybody can remember numbers. So is this saying that if you can't do the math and you can't remember the numbers, that you're the Ephraimites? No. No. It can't be that, right? But we have to be able to understand the message in some way, right? And so we know 
this symbol that's given is that some people are not going to be able to frame the word correctly. And that means that we need to study. We need to obey the call when we are called and to participate in the study of God's word so that we can understand it, so that we can share it. God's given us an additional extension of time. He's given us time to do this. We don't know how much time. It could be months, right? It could be years. It could be longer. We don't know. We're not setting a date saying that April 5th, 2030 is, you know, some date that we have to look to. So we got lots of time. We're not saying that because it's a symbolic date. As a symbol, it ties to all these other dates and allows us to understand these things, right? And we have already addressed, and because I'm going to be addressing April 5th, 2030, but we've already addressed that it is um, a symbolic date that looks into the future, but witnesses to our lines. That is, we have in our history 9-11, Right? Yeah. And the interesting thing about 9-11 is that I have never been able to, until we started studying Judges, really give, like I looked at all the spans of time and I tried to figure out how can we show 9-11? How does it fit into the prophetic periods? And we know that we have this April 5th, 2030 date. And I'm going to go into this in detail in the week of Christ study and how we came to understand that. But we have this April 5th, 2030 date, and this is the first day of the first month. And we have over here uh, another date, which is uh, April 19th, 1844. And April 19th, 1844 is the arrival of the second angel, right? It's the first day of the first month. And in the story of Ezra, it goes from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, right? He's going to leave Babylon on the first day of the first month. He's going to get to the river um, um, Ahava, right? On the 12th, he's going to leave. He's going to get to Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. And then on the three days before the 20th day of the ninth month, he's going to have this call to repentance. On the first day of the 10th month, they start the divorce proceedings. On the first day of the first month, they're completed. It covers an entire year. And we can see that this covers an entire year, symbolically, from April 19th to April 2030. We know that this is a period of 2,300 months, lunar months, you know, when you see a new moon in the sky, this is uh, 67,920 days. It's 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months. It's also 186 solar years, or actually biblical years, because this is the first day of the first month, first day of the first month. It's obviously not both April 19th. So it's 187 biblical years. So this is prophetic, and this is biblical. So it, and we know then that this is the 187th of those years, because the first day of the first month starts the 187th, and that is then what we get from the first day of the first month to the first day of the 10th month is the 187th day of the year, 186 cardinal years. So it's witnessed to in this way. But the interesting thing, too, is what do we mark in our history as a parallel to the second angel arriving in Millerite history? What do we mark? Right, we mark 9-11. So if we put 9-11 over here, 9-11 is also this date. It's the second angel arriving in our history. And from, if we look at 9-11, and we count uh, from 457 B.C., there is 
from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, right? So this is the first day of the first month. This is the first day of the first month. So in 457 BC, this is 354 days. It's just a regular, uh, uh, what do they call it? It's not a, a common regular year. So it's a common year. It doesn't have a leap year. And it's regular. It's not deficient. It's not 353. And it's not um, complete. It's not 355. It's 354. It's a common regular year. And if we count from here then, we take this also as a symbol of the first day of the first month, correct? That's how we got it to be the second angel arriving. And if we count from September 11th and we count the months, this is going to be 354 months and then this will be the first day of the first month starting a new year, right? So we can take 354 months, right? And we can do it as lunar months, which is going to start actually on August 22nd. This month that September 11th happens in is on, starts on August 22nd. So that would be the first month. It falls in that first month. And then that 354 months will end exactly here when the 355th month begins, right? That's a lunar month. And if I count it as prophetic months and I start here at 9-11, it's going to give me 354 months ending on the 10th day of the 7th month, which in this year is October 8th. Right? So that's going to be the 10th day of the 7th month, and that would also give me 354 months, which is you know, the 187 days from here to here. So we have a witness, because of April 5th, 2030, a strong witness for establishing this as the second angel arriving. So what Jeff had done in making this the second angel arriving in the first day of the first month is witnessed to by the story of Ezra, if we understand this April 5th, 2030, as related to this first day of the first month, by 2,300 months, by 186 years, or 187 years and 20 prophetic months. So, we can see that this is not something that we should just set aside. We can't say, well, you guys created this April 5th, 2030 date, but it's not needed, it's you know, it's peace and safety message because you're putting a date in the future. But we're not saying it's a date in the future. We're saying it's a symbol that relates to the lines that we are presently in. It tells us something about the lines. It, it just as Stephen's work on the chronology confirms that our chronology is correct. This confirms that our understanding of the repeat of Millerite history is correct. And it relates to our lines in so many different ways. It relates to Colin's prediction, which is why I really started to, to notice it. I'd noticed it before. Um, I thought it was interesting. But it also re relates to the week of Christ study. And that week of Christ study is what we're going to be studying uh, later tonight. So I still have the study of Manoah, the study of Samson, the birth of some Sa Samson, the line of Manoah, and then... Uh, then Stephen is going to present. So Stephen's going to present. And then I'm going to present the line in Manoa. And then I'm going to present the first study tonight at 7 o'clock here on the week of Christ. And I'm going to do that for the Sabbath sermon tomorrow as well. Um, and it's an important message. And, and the first two studies I'm doing are just the notes from 2018. Right? I mean, obviously, I'm going to add more to them, and then we're going to have a third presentation, and then we're going to finish the line of Samson. There's lots of things that we have to do. But these are not something that we could have contrived. And so anybody who wants to, to decide whether what we're saying is true or not needs to spend time testing these things. You may not like some of the things that we've said. We may, you may not like our personalities. You may not like... Uh, how we put our personal dates into these lines. You may not like how we do our presentations or how we dress or how our voice sounds or all these different things. 
But those things don't matter. All we have to ask ourselves is, is it true? And how do I know if it's true? I compare scripture with scripture. I study to show myself approved unto God. And so this is the appeal that I'm making to people uh, in these studies. Okay, so let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for the light that has been shining from the cross of Calvary, from the week of Christ, from his sacrifice for us. We know, Lord, that you have called us out of darkness into light, and that light reveals to us our need of you. It shows us our sins and your power to forgive and to strengthen us. We pray for each person who is studying these things, that we can set aside personal prejudices and preferences, and that we can persevere in the pursuit of truth, even if it hurts. We ask for forgiveness for the way that we treat each other, for the words that we say that appear harsh or sometimes uh, callous or um, inconsiderate or rash or thoughtless, not considering one another. Help us, Lord, to lift each other up, to see what you are doing in other people's lives and to encourage that work. Be with us now and for the rest of the day into the Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.